we're really, we're really glad to be here. And uh, two days ago, we flew from China, and uh, it came to our notice that there are not a lot of Chinese firms. So again, really glad to be here. <laughs> and uh, my name is Quinn, and uh, I'm the product manager from Tencent. And this is our senior machine learning AI scientist, He Huan Liu. Hi, hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. OK, so actually, I want to start with a topic today, which is bring text to SQL to BI production in large enterprise. So it's a long title, and uh, it, al it already have all the components in it. So you have large language model. You have a BI tool we want to put in production, and also fine tuning and a lot of data preparation. So who is this talk intended for? If you are data platform product managers like I am, and, uh, or if you are a technician like data engineers or data scientists like my dear colleague, you will find this talk useful. So in this presentation, we will showcase the first-hand experience from Tencent large-scale practice adapting the latest large language model to BI product. And since this is an advanced session, so we won't introduce or explain too much about the basic idea about fine-tuning large language model or like a RAG, retrieval augmented generation. So, and also, because we came from China, do not hit too hard on, on our language skill, especially from a colleague. Okay, <laughs> let's get started. So first thing first, conclusion first. Text to SQL has already been existed for a long time, but since we have large language model, it has never been so promising right now. And under the hood, you will always find fine tuning, prompt engineering is the core part of text to SQL large language model. And what we want to achieve is we have a lot of users of our BI product within Tencent, which is a product manager or operational list. Not everyone write perfect pro level SQL, right? So we want to query with natural language. So that's the attempt we try to we try to bridge the gap between that proof of concept text to SQL to actually bring it into production. And after experiment with a lot of models, we say we start from Bell and we tried SQL coder, we tried wizard coder, we tried deep sea coder, and we have a lot of uh, experiment intuitive in experiment, not like a, uh, everything is benchmarking because we do a lot of benchmarking, but we but we will say not everyone agree with each other's benchmarking test. So <laughs> we will say this one is currently maybe within four weeks because everything changes so fast. The deep sea coder 33B with instruct is the best foundational model we find so far for text to SQL. And uh, for the fine tuning process, we use Laura. And uh, also we have a training instruction set for two primary goals. The first one is we try to cover as much as possible the query syntax, the complexity, the complex query, and also the SQL syntax. Say you have a lot of table joins, you have a lot of uh, sub queries. So that's where, what we try to cover with our training data set. And the second part is we train one model that can serve multiple business scenarios. We don't want to train one model each for different users. Because Tencent is a big corporate, we have Tencent News, and also we have Tencent Video. Imagine Tencent Video is Netflix. Uh, Tencent News is NBA News. So different major and large corporate resides in, within this corporate. So we want to train one model that can serve different business uses. So that's why we have to represent the business knowledge to pour that understanding of business scenario into the model. And we also uh, focus on optimizing the performance of the cost effective, especially during the inference process. Um, for, as for the benchmarking um, part, we compare with GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. Because we started this project a year ago, and right now we can fine tune a large language model that match GPT 4 level, which is around the, like a little bit over 50% accuracy. Mm. So though it is not as capable as GPT-4, why? Because it's not as large as GPT, because nobody is, 
we will say as large as GPT. So text to SQL model is fundamentally a coding model. And the text to SQL is only a small portion. We use that model. So it's a vertical model, it's relatively small. So it's not as comprehensive and uh, um, like a general generalization level is not as good as GPT-4. But what do we care is here. The model, our model performs better, which is more accurately than GPT-4. That's what we, that is, that is important, more important to us when we do SQL writing, right? Accuracy. And especially in case of uh, table joins, subqueries, or SQL optimizations. So that's the conclusion. Um, remember this, the foundational model we use during our test, and also the performance we have uh, from our testing. So the presentation have three parts. The first one is why. Why we fine tune a large language model? Why? You already have GPT, right? You have GPT-4, you have uh, Cloudera, and uh, they, even though they are close to AI per se, but they give you APIs. You can still get access to the services. So why you try to fine tune a model? The reason is three. Just give you a hint because my colleague here will introduce later. Cost, data privacy, because we're a Chinese firm. Um, yeah, not too, well, <laughs> we don't want to mention too, <laughs> mention too much about it, but that's one of the reason, data privacy, the cost, and also the performance. The GPT-4, 4.0 has already improved a lot, but GPT-4 is slow, if you remember. Yeah, like a couple months ago. So um, that's the why. And also we will introduce the benchmark testing and the model selection based on our test. And the second part is, if you agree with the why we provide. So here we go. How to fine tune a model. Fine tuning has been that buzzword, but actually in the core part of fine tuning is data preparation. Good quality data, good quality data, good quality data will give you a perfect model, right? Not a big size chunk of everything, but the specified what do you care part of the high quality model. If you pour that into the large language model from the open source the, um, community, you will actually like get what you want. So this is the second part um, of how. The first two parts will be relatively technical and it will be introduced by my colleague. And I will come back with the use case and uh, talk a little bit about product-wise how we use the large language model, especially the text to SQL to improve the current BI system. So. Welcome, Huan. Thank you, Kun. Thank you, Kun. First, let me introduce the section one. Why? Fine-tune LMs to improve test SQL. As Kun just said, we have GPT and open LMs. Why fine-tune our own test SQL models? That is because the data policy, cost, and performance. Based on the Tencent business needs, GPT cannot meet the data privacy and the data security requirement. And the response time of GPT is long. The APIs are not cheap. So we are looking for the cost-effective models that respond faster. And as for the open LMs, the training data is pretty simple. So for the in-context learning, that not always provides the correct result for the specific domain and the business pattern. The circle generated by the open LMs and the GPT are not optimized for the predicted, predicted pushing down and the column pruning, which could not generate high performance SQL clauses when calling big data. So our objective is fine tune a test to circle module that could serve multi-domains and multi-business use cases. It could solve very complicated problems. Meanwhile, to achieve best practice in memorization and generalization, it could be done in specific data lake and data warehouse. Um, to improve the uh, generalization, Test circle could learn from the, the generalization, but for the specific domain knowledge, it should be learned from the context learning. Comparing to the chat model, we all know that 
test circle model should generate stable, correct, high performance circle classes, which is quite different from child model. Now I introduce why and our objective. Not then how, how to do it. Below is the steps, how to fine tune the child circle module. First, pick a, a foundation model and then generate training data. Mm, then clean the data site, instruct tuning and benchmark. Uh, we try several different uh, modules and uh, uh, use the bird data site and tensor test to evaluate its uh, model performance. We we focus especially focus on the accuracy. From the below table, we could see that the child GIM and Bell, which is the general model, it performs better for Chinese. And the uh, star coder with the coder, deep sea coder and SQL coder, they are coding LMs. From the table, we could see that the accuracy for both tensor data side and the open data side perform better in coding LMs than the general module. So we pick with our coder 33B, deep sea coder 33B with instruct, and the SQL coder 34B as our potential choices for the foundation model. But, but, before the, the coding model is uh, all available, we also use the bell as our foundation model. Session two, how to, how to fine tune the fine tune process. As you know that for the fine tuning, the most important part is data preparation. But we have two, two challenges. Challenge one, there is no high quality data set for fine tuning. But the quality of the training data is crucial. And the common data sites, such as bird, spider, chess, do circle, are all in English. We, they all need to be translated. Let's look at the table. The table fares, table size, table count, and the calculation methods, tons in the data size, is more complicated than the open data size, the, the spider data size. And uh, for the business data size, the table quality is always messy. From the circle quality, both of them are not good enough. Challenge two, complex level of output and input. The circle is the output of the LMs, and the core is the input of LMs. In the test circle field, we all focus on the circle complexity to measure the capability of the test circle module. However, however, we should pay attention on the core complexity. Complexity. It is classified to four levels, easy, medium, hard, and extra hard. Our goal, let's look at the chart on the left. Our goal for our fine tuning model, we should solve all of these problems in its four parts, especially for the red, left, the top right corner area. Data preparation, part one. There are four parts for the data preparation. The first is part one. There are two points. Self-instruction, align training data with actual data distribu distribution. distribution. From the orange chart flow, we have manually generated several high quality um, examples, which is filled into the sample pool. And select, random select some 
examples and fill them to the LLMs as a few, few short examples. The generated circle will be evaluated by the sample checking module. If the circle is too valid, it will, fill, will be filled to the LM pool, which is used to the to the serve as an alternative set for the next round of model selection. Point two, circle syntax distribution. Let's look at the table below. The open source data site is simple. It has basic DDL, simple filtering and aggregation, sorting and limiting. So we need to generate high complex data sets. That's very important. It, it should contain strong condition and sub queries to improve the coverage of advanced circle. Right. Data preparation, part two. It has four points. Point one, enhancing query coverage by query writing. This is very important to improve the robustness of test circle performance. It is also very important to important to improve the diversify of the training sample. Second, covering more complex levels. Meanwhile, fixing bad cases in foundation models and including real users' habits and the user patterns, especially in the time representation and the metric calculation. From the chart, we could see that the open source data set, which con contains a lot of easy and medium examples, and the Tencent data set has hard and extra hard examples. This is very different from the open source data set. To improve our model, we particularly extract samples carrying hard and extra hard levels from Tencent data set as our training data set. Okay. Part three, data preparation. Part three, instruct tuning template. The left part is the instruct tuning template. It contains three parts, instruction, input, and response. Instruction is the user question. It also could include the domain knowledge. The input is the table name and table fields. The response is the uh, expect circle. So the red table describes the, the detailed information for this uh, instruction tuning template. Data preparation part four. In context learning, we should pay attention on the enum population and the implied condition learning. We use them as the, in the in context learning. The right side is an example for the instrument tuning. From table, there are two tables. But if we do not tell the, the model how to join, we could not know, the model could not know. So, we add the implied condition, the join condition, and the instruct, instruct part. This, this will make the circle more accurate. Now, we get the data ready, available for the fine tuning. It's really available for the fine tuning? No. There is another challenge, dirty data. Neither open data set, no, the Tencent data set are perfect, reliable. And the data set generated by GPT are not 100% correct. Below is some examples. Let me introduce two examples. In example one, the point one, I element of table fares names between query and circle, upper lowercase missing fares. Point seven, Rewriting queries to increase the uh, variety, but these queries are, are not, not actually not the same as headache, right? But we need to solve it. Solve it. After our data preparation, we have a total over 16,000 16, refined samples for the total for the model training. And from the chart, we see that. The different difficulty levels are balanced for our training data set.
the data is ready. Now we need to fine tune a module. These are the hard takeaways for fine tuning. I think it's time for take photos. We use LoRa to fine tune our own module. And these parameters are our experiments, the inspired um, parameters which perform well uh, in our module. So you can take it to test, test your, try your own test um, module. And please especially pay attention on the inference part to increase the stability of return result. Confidence below parameters, you should get the same result. It would improve the model's robustness. Below four points is also very important. Point one, four parameters fine tune, four parameter tuning was better on larger sample size. LoRa was better on smaller sample size. Point two, four parameter tuning works better. However, however, four parameters tuning may cause a huge problem on forgetting, but LoRa may save it. To summarize, to summarize, a high quality sample with a small size can achieve even better performance. After our data preparation and fine tuning, we should evaluate our type circle module. Here is the result. We could see that the deep circle coder 33B with instruct has the best performance. This module was generated by Huanfeng Quang, which is a Chinese company. And comparing to the, the, the performance, which is not fine tuning. Before fine tuning, Visa Coder performs the best. But we found that Deep Sea Coder show better comprehension than other modules. Here is the benchmark result. Our, our fine tuned Deep Sea module has the same performance result on board this side and uh, it performed a little bit better on Tencent data set. From the left bottom chart, we could see that the fine-tuned module has a better result than GPT-4 on medium level complexity. This is very important for us because a lot of questions in the real world are the medium level questions. Let me show some example, the benchmark result example. The first line, predicate push down and column pruning. Our models, our model perform better than GPT-4 because it used predicate push down and column pruning. Let's see, let's see the red part. It removes irrelevant uh, uh, columns when it select from the database. It uses the, the column pruning <coughs> feature, which is to improve the so-called performance. Line two, in context learning. The R model learns the user's preference for the specific data format. Please look at the create add column. This is the specific user preference for the data format. Okay, thank you. Thank you for listening. This is my part. Let's go back to Kun. Thank you. All right, thank you, He Huan. That was amazing. Thank you. And uh, I will take it from here, uh, which let's do a quick recap. The first part and the second part. So why we try to fine tune a large language model. So let's get a little bit excited. We have open source models in the open community, right? You take one foundational model and you fine tune it with your business knowledge and with your care. And we show the technique there with the data preparation and a fine tuning skill. And with that two parts, 
that you can construct a model that performs, matches GPT-4. So that's the excitement. And right now we have a, a model fine-tuned, which, which has a little bit like over 50% of accuracy in text to SQL. You input a user's natural language query, and it gives you the expected SQL clause, right? But to put it into production is not good enough. Why? Let's say I have a friend. His name is Woody, and I have a real friend. Woody is a data engineer like from my, from my company. And uh, one day I told him, just do an analysis about Tencent video, say Netflix or so. That the hottest TV show in the past seven days, show me the DAU, daily active user. And Woody will get back to me, reply, say, I got a 50% chance to give you the right answer. How about that? You are not going to trust this guy, right? Because data engineer's job is accurately to analyze whatever business insight we have from that data pool. So 50% is low. And to give a ballpark, the best practice in the industry from the open source community, that the best text to SQL model from the spider or from, um, from bird, it's a little bit over 60%. It's better than us, but it's not good enough. And in Tencent, we say, if we want to serve Tencent Video and Tencent MBA News, we feel good if we say the model's accuracy reach over 80%. That's the level that we want to achieve, and it feels good that we can put them in production, even for trying out. So I will give some sample queries. Say we have business need here, Tencent Video, Netflix, uh, NBA News, because Tencent is the exclusive agency for NBA News Online. So a lot of creators and uh, a lot of uh, operationalists, they try to find out how to do better decisions. So they do not write SQL perfectly. So they will ask questions in natural language. For example, sports content creators always ask, how has LeBron James performed in the, last, in the past 10 games? I'm not a fan of basketball, but uh, yeah, you will find the similar questions everywhere when you want to create content for sports news, right? And uh, as for like say, Tencent Video, Netflix, Show me the click-through rate of users who have watched film and television show after a specific advertising, advertisement page. So those sample user queries should be understood and transformed into a SQL clause. Get it executed, return you a table, or actually maybe one line of number that can guide you for further more business decision. So to achieve the 80% bar, what do we do to enhance the 50%, like 54 accuracy um, of the fine-tuned text to SQL model is this. Of course, we use RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. And in the core part of that RAG is query rewriting, which my colleague He Huang already mentioned. So we have a lot of uh, domain knowledge for each business, as we already discussed. We want to find to a model that can serve several different business groups, not for only one. Right? So for different businesses, MBA News has certain very, like a, rely heavily on business knowledge. And for Tencent Video is another different domain. So how are we gonna pump those knowledge base into the model? What do we do is through prompts. So very easy technique. This is the secret sauce to improve your accuracy, which is query writing. So in this slides, I show two I show a comparison of two modes. One use query writing and one does not. So with query writing, no, first, let's start with without query writing. A query user may ask, what, what's the hottest product lately? You have millions of understanding, like interpretation of this question, right? Maybe you ask for a specific product ID with the highest, highest, click, highest click rates, or you ask what is the highest, uh, highest to sale with certain products, right? And probably you will say uh, some other like related because they are all possible within that scope. So the results are pretty random. If we use query writing, we add another large language model here. But important to note, this is not the text to SQL model. 
This is any general model you use. It could be a chat model. So any model you feel like you want to use, just put the question, which is user query, into the instruction, and also all your table information, which is the metadata of your data, um, which is the table name and table fields, like product ID, uh, sales, dates, everything. Like the second line here. And the model will give you back the output, which is exactly what we want. It improves accuracy like a water filter. The dirty water comes from the users, and we want to filter them first before we give it to the text to SQL, right? And right now we have the right question. What is What was the product ID with the highest sales yesterday? It all happens behind the scene, but you will see the output is much more accurate. And users still ask the vague question as they want, and we have a more accurate result. The challenge I already explained, and the solution is easy. Add a filter here, which is query writing. And I will show one uh, here, uh, example. Just read the second line. This is an NBA news scenario. Without query writing, or like a user asking a question, what are the players who have hit 50 plus three pointers this season? And a SQL generated here, select the player name and everything with where condition, but the return the result is wrong. Why? Because actually what you want to ask is, in 2023 season, which players have a cumulative total of more than 53 point shots? This is much more understandable to the database when you write a, when you write a SQL query, right? And in the query you can see, select where it's the same as the without query writing, but it put group by and it gives the time. So the text to SQL model will, the burden of that model will be shared by the query writing because you add that water filter to it. All right. So folks, probably I should put this diagram in the very beginning because this is the entire RAG architecture that we use to perform the text to SQL uh, magic. Like if we do better, like maybe a little bit over 95% or like a, like a human, I would say it's a magic, but still, we got the last mile to run, but the last mile is to Mount Everest. That's the hardest part of the, of the, of the entire travel. What we introduced here is the second part. If you remember, recall from part one and part two, why and how we find to a model, the model's here, right here. Okay, I should show <laughs> right here. The model's here. And the query process, the query writing is right here. So the entire presentation is only the second part of the query process. And you have the metadata and the data which is ready for construct the knowledge base. Um, you can tweak right here to improve the accuracy more. Uh, maybe try different splitting and chunking techniques. They do a little bit overlapping or um, change the embedding algorithms. So you have a better knowledge base that can serve everything else. That's the first part. First part of the extra you can do for the enhancement. And the third is um, indexing. You can retrieve better because you do a better re-ranking. Since the business knowledge is different for like a different business groups or different uses scenarios. So you may want to tweak the re-ranking a little bit. So all the, origin, uh, all the orange rectangle here is the customizable module that you can use to improve the overall accuracy. So we, we, we tried every part of it and uh, we won't go deep in this presentation because that will be another 40 minutes presentation. <laughs> And we already submitted that presentation, but Databricks feels like this is the one they want. And uh, yeah, here we go. And uh, you, the pink one is everything useful, central to your business knowledge, like a knowledge base and the answers you get. Um, all this color greenish one is the large language model. And this yellowish brown is the data metadata with the in-process um, chunks data you generated in the process. Okay, so that will be all for the technical part. And I will showcase two, just two slides containing our products. We have a large BI tool. Why? To give a ballpark, the number of active user for the Tencent Beacon, which shows here, the logos here, that bluish one, uh, is 10,000 users. 
So about 10% to 20% of employees within Tencent use this BI system to check every day. And Tencent is a, is a large internet company. It generates like billions of lines of data every day. And uh, which, sorry, no, here. And we have, and we have, we have to handle 2 million SQL queries per week. So that's the challenge we, we have. But that's also a good thing because we have a lot of uh, data to play with. And uh, we, started, we started to play with large language model about a year ago when everything starts. Uh, start from the dashboards because that's the cleanest data you will ever get, right? Because people already manipulate, filt filtered, and write all kinds of difficult complex SQL already. So we start from here to use the general large language model to interpret it. And later we have the text to SQL model which we have a brand name of Ola Chat. Um, this is a brand for the text to SQL capability within our BI system. You can put this steam engine anywhere, but we want a car. So it could be a standalone like the, the two left, uh, the two slides on the left, two pictures on the left, or it could be a co-pilot, like it embedded into a system that only expand when you want on the side of the panel. To show more, if you have more agent, you can use intention inference. So once you locate it's a text to SQL, it runs everything. Take the user natural language input, give you back the SQL clauses, and uh, execute it, give you a table, and give you interpretation of that SQL, and also the return result. If you add multiple, like more lines of um, Python code, you can get a visualization even. So you chat it here, and you get inside here. And it could be a copilot or standalone product. So that's how we try out. Um, it's not perfect, but uh, it's really fun to play with. So that will be all for our presentation. Thank you, folks, for listening.